Hello friends and welcome to 3 a.m. Europe. Pope Francis' most popular cliché so far has been that division is the weapon the devil employs to destroy the church, not only the local but the universal church from within. And we have shown you that anyone who divides you is a terrorist according to Pope Francis. Sono le chiacchiere. E niente, dire una parolina contro un altro o dire una storia, questo ha fatto... No. Fare chiacchiere è terrorismo. Perché quello che chiacchiera è come un terrorista che butta la bomba e se ne va, distrugge. Con la lingua distrugge. Non fa la pace. Ma è furbo, eh? non è un, un terrorista suicida. No, no, lui si custodisce bene. Now, this is a very appealing statement to many. But I believe this is once again the propaganda of false ecumenism, making people believe that all kinds of unity must come from God. Now, don't misunderstand me. The Bible clearly tells us that behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And Jesus prayed for his church in John chapter 17 to have unity. But what is this unity that Jesus wants? And is Pope Francis right when he says that division, all kinds of division, is from the devil? Are there instances in the Bible where division contrary to what Pope says, is a good thing. Well, let us have a short and quick Bible study. You see, at creation, in Genesis chapter 1, God is, interestingly enough, dividing light from darkness, which of course has a physical implication for nature, but as we will see, as it comes to unity and division in the church, John says that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Sure, darkness is the absence of light, but already in creation, the main point that the reader will see is that unity in God cannot have these two things mixed up since they are antithetical to each other. But not only light and darkness do we see when it comes to unity and division, but in Leviticus chapter 10 verse 10 and chapter 11 verse 47 says that the priests in Israel, in other words the leaders, they were called to teach the people the difference between holiness and unholiness and what is clean and unclean. And so, since the church should abide in God, unity, therefore, which is to be revealed by God's church, cannot be in darkness, nor can it even carry within itself any taint of uncleanness or unholiness. It is for this reason the Bible said about the Old Testament Israel, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. And regarding the New Testament church, Peter said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and here it comes, a holy nation, a peculiar people, why? That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of what? Darkness into his marvelous light. The kind of unity which Christ so desires in his church is not a wishy-washy type of unity, a kind of political unity based upon compromise, but a unity that so powerfully reflects God's own character, which is devoid of darkness, unholiness, and uncleanness. But how do we know what is darkness, unclean, and unholy? Well, by knowing what is light, of course, what is clean, and what is holy. That, and that happens by the law of God. The Bible says about light, for instance, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20 says, To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is a no light in them. Everything that we hear, even this message, and especially messages from religious leaders like Pope Francis, should be compared to the law and to the testimony, and only when we have done it can we say whether their statement is light 
or darkness, about holiness and uncleanness. The Bible says in Romans chapter 7, verse 12, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and just and good. And Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26 says, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane, neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profane among them. Unfortunately, this statement, which was made a couple of hundred years ago, this is true about the Christian world today as well. Just like Israel before, we also have rejected God and His ways. We have cast aside the law, and we don't know anymore the difference between what is holy and profane, what is unclean and clean. Therefore, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What this means is that the way we can have this unity of faith is if we understand the knowledge of the Son of God. You know, it is to understand God's character as His law reflects it and realize it as it is. In Psalm chapter 86, verse 11, it says that, Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Because God is the embodiment of truth, any unity which he so desires should be based upon that which he has revealed in his law, in his Bible, and in the person of Jesus Christ. Therefore, if there is a unity that is based upon falsehood and unbiblical confusion, we are called as Christians to not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? This is, in the Greek, literally unlawfulness. Anomia. This is absolutely amazing. You cannot have unity that is both has righteousness and unrighteousness. And what communion hath light with darkness. And here it is again. God divided light from darkness. And you cannot have communion with light and darkness. A unity mingled with syncretism. Truth and error is not a unity in the sight of God. Why? Because God is light. God is truth. And in Him is no darkness no error at all. So therefore, my message to Pope Francis and to all genuine believers in the ecumenical movement, this is it. Not whether division is of the devil, as Pope Francis said, but whether there is a unity of the devil. Because this is the most important thing. And I believe that the answer to our question, is there unity that is of the devil? I believe the answer is yes. God in the Bible is constantly dividing the unity which the devil had established against God. Whether, you know, we look at the entire history of Israel's rebellion against God, or it is the time of Noah when the sons of God united with the daughters of men, or it is Babel in Genesis chapter 11, particularly verse 6, when it says that the people is one, but God clearly confounded and divided the unity of the devil. The symbol of Babel or Babylon which means confusion, will play a pivotal role at the end of time just before Jesus returns, according to the book of Revelation chapter 17 and 18. This theopolitical unity, which we now see in the fulfillment of the ecumenical movement going back to Rome, is, I believe, a warning message to all of us who love God and fear His name, not to unite with it in any way, but to call people into the unity of Christ. I believe the unity which the Pope propagates, that unity is of God and all kinds of division is from the devil, I believe his message undermines God's word and God's will is completely nullified for the unity God wants to have in his church. Actually, if you think about it, by claiming that division within the church is from the devil, he actually claims that Martin Luther's protest was from the devil itself. Why? because Luther chose to separate from Rome. Therefore, 2017, which will be the 500th anniversary of Luther's Reformation, will mark the death of Protestantism. 
as I have shown you in many, many uh, clips that I have done, where we have seen Lutheran leaders who have openly and clearly shown that they have given up on Luther's and his teachings and almost fully embraced Catholicism. And I want to say this, Protestants and even Catholics, wake up. And even other people who are watching this clip, wake up. I want to tell you, Protestantism is not dead. The Pope and the ecumenical movement should instead open their eyes for how they are fulfilling prophecy itself, that the whole world, according to Revelation 13, will wander after the papacy. I say the Bible is the standard of our faith. And as Luther said, peace, if possible, truth at all costs. Revelation 18 verse 4 says about spiritual Babylon, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. Here we clearly see a message from God which is about separation. It's a, it's a message about division. God says, Come out of spiritual Babylon. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. May God grant all of us the wisdom that we may see through the devil's deceptions to not be part of his unity, but instead run to Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who is coming back soon. So thank you, friends. Please share this clip and remember that if you are watching and listening to this, you are part of the spiritual resistance.